2. Uh, just a full disclosure, I have played this, but I just played it on story difficulty on um, my Xbox, and I just did the first episode on stream, but I had so many interruptions, and I had so many issues with sound and audio, like, syncing up, so I, you know, on the, there I had it running off my external hard drive, so I just fixed my installation so it's on my actual hard drive directly, so maybe that'll help with the sound sync issues, hopefully. <laughs> so, we'll give it a shot, like, we're gonna play the first episode over again, and, um, Hopefully the recording comes out better, and you know, if you see the original stream, like, it's on Twitch. So, without any further ado, let's just jump right into the, the beginning of this all over again. <laughs> and we can replay all this stuff in the beginning, because without any more interruptions and stuff like that. So, let's give us a second go. <laughs> Alright. So this is Alan Wake 2, on PC. I originally played it on Xbox, so... But on, on Xbox, I played story mode like that. So I just got one of the story. But now I'm going to play it on normal. And I really don't remember a lot about the story. Like, there's a lot of things I, I missed out on because, like, you know, distractions happen when you were playing casually by yourself. Um, I kind of rushed through some things, too, because I just wanted to get to certain story beats, like, that I wanted to see. Like, some things were revealed at certain times, and then I was like, oh, I wanted to see more. But anyway. I said let's get into it, let's just get into it. <laughs> Hopefully, everything loads nice and quick too now. Oh, look at that. Back to the beginning. We all come to a story with hopes and expectations, looking for an answer. Sometimes it would be better to live with that hope without ever knowing the full story. should be on a mixer. Story. There we go. We are in for a ride now. In a horror story, there are only victims and monsters. And the trick is not to end up as either. But trapped by the genre, we are all ripped to pieces along the way. This is not the story I hoped it would be. This is not the ending I wanted. This story will eat us alive. This story is a monster. And monsters wear many faces. That's really cool. This game really looks amazing. Chunky guy. Little back rolls. <laughs> Sounds. We're going this way to the woods. 
trying to get to the, that flashlight that was there. Those, those things like really make you jump. at me. guy here on the table. So in your face with that logo. Alan Wake 2. <laughs> hey kiddo, how are you? I'm good mom, how are you? This trip might take a little longer than I thought. I'm sorry I've been gone so much lately Logan. Oh my god, Mom, it's not your fault. People get all murdery. What happened? Just work stuff. Right. Well, Dad and I are just watching the latest episode of Night Springs here. Mom, it's so good. No spoilers. I'll let you get back to the show. You were supposed to wait and watch with me. I love you both. This is what happens when you go on work trips, Mom. Love you too. And say hi to Casey. Tell him to stop brooding so much. <laughs> Logan! I will. Bye, kiddo. Logan thinks you should try cheering up. <laughs> Snarky kid. Wonder where she gets that from. <laughs> the sip in unison. 
can't be a coincidence that another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Feels like the killer's leaving us a message. Hmm. I'm glad you're on this case with me, Anderson. It's right up your alley. You should take the lead. Think of me as the backup. Okay. Any words of advice? Nothing that would cheer anyone up. Here we are. Aldrin Lake. Time to get to work. A deputy was supposed to be here to show us to the crime scene. There's the car, so where's the deputy? <laughs> Eaten by a bear? I'll check out that map. Got the map. The invitation. All right. You're the one who wanted to switch. I think I hear someone. I'm not walking all the way back Could down. be our deputy. I can go take a look. Hey, over here. Hey there. there Agent Casey, right? Sheriff Raker said you'd be coming by to take over the case. You're half right. Anderson? Saga Anderson. I'll be leading this case. Seems you already know my partner, Alex Casey. Shoot. Sorry about that, ma'am. I'm Deputy Mulligan. I just figured that, you know, that, uh... The federal agent's right here, Thornton. My partner Thornton, <laughs> down at the crime scene. He's not what you call the sharpest axe in the shed. Right here? What do you mean? I think it was you. Oh, shit. They didn't hear me, did they? Well, oh. Were there any witnesses? Yeah, a couple out of towners. I wonder what they were doing sneaking around the woods at oh, night. Yeah. That we have anything against city folk, right, Thornton? But don't worry. Sheriff Breaker took him back to town a while ago. What can you tell us about the crime scene? Tell him about the heart. I was getting to that, Thornton. <laughs> well, we reckon there are some uh, organs that are currently outside the victim's person when they should be. But you know, inside. <laughs> I want to see the body. How do we get there? Oh, sure, that's real simple. Just through the hole in the fence, down the hill towards the lake, around the old convenience store, you can't miss it. Everything's been closed since the area was fenced off. The store, the campground, all of it. our way to that crime scene before we get to the crime scene there's time to review the facts of the case so far make sure I'm seeing the clues clearly All right. case board. the mind place my version of the mind palace technique to hmm. sift through clues and work the case building the mind place again for each case using each field office as a model in my head the facts are on the board. Everything we know about the previous murders. Worth taking another look. Okay. to cracking it we're just getting started let's head down the hill to the crime scene hey Casey you putting me in charge why now look Anderson you're a better detective than I am 
You've cracked cases that had the rest of us baffled. I don't want to slow you down. Are you thinking of retiring? You know what happens to cops who say this is their last case. Mm-hmm. Real funny, Anderson. <laughs> Stairs are out. You okay to jump down? I'm not that old. That's <laughs> yeah, funny making Casey like sound like he's like, too old kind of thing. He's just stoic, that's all. Fucking nature. <laughs> Gives me a headache. It's too much sky. This game looks great, though. Like, especially after playing the first one not too long ago. Jumping into this one. <laughs> Crazy. Not a bad place to get murdered. Hmm. If getting back to nature is your thing. Right? Damn. Should have brought an umbrella. I like the rain. The only thing around here that feels like home. You think the local law had the sense to put up a tarp? Hmm. <laughs> if they did, next coffee's on me. Thornton, I believe. Hey! Yep. Deputy Thornton, I take it. That's me, at your service, ready to get this case solved. Now the body's behind the store. Come on, I'll show you. So, FBI, huh? That's so cool. Hunting down psycho serial killers and shootouts with the mob? You forgot the UFO cover-ups. What? Those are real? <laughs> you guys hiring? Gordon, he's joking. Let's just see this body, shall we? He did say he's not the sharpest axe in the shed, right? <laughs> now this is the scene of the crime. We found him on the table. Now, he didn't touch nothing, you know, procedures and stuff. Thanks, Deputy. No tarp. You owe me a coffee. Okay. <laughs> Let's start by examining our guest of honor. Does this fit the MO of the previous murders? Body is positioned on the table. Ritualistic. Let's see. Another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Coincidence? All right, so let's get the crime scene. All right. The killer left the heart right next to the body. Bruising on the wrist from the cargo straps holding him down. Inside stab wound, chest cut open, heart removed. All right, so what we got here now is that, 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 and that. Heart removed from chest, strapped by the wrists. Definitely matches the previous murders. Yeah. But this time the heart and the straps were left behind. More clues to work with. This makes four murders that we know about. Four? We get what are the other three? Alright, well let's Who is our victim? Who killed him? Need to find more clues. Multiple people were here. Multiple killers? Large amount of blood on the table. The victim died here. Got... Someone left in a hurry. Knock the tripod over. Was it for a camera? 
Someone was drinking beer. They spent time here, waiting. Indicating multiple killers. Quite the party. What else is there? Oh, we got... Any idea who the victim is? Oh, I sure do. His name is Nightingale. He was FBI. He came to town about 13 years ago. Now, I haven't heard a word about him since. Nightingale. Until now. Nightingale. Robert Nightingale? Oh, yes. You probably knew him. Brothers in arms. Oh, and sisters. So, Nightingale, that's why... Maybe that's why he said Hemingway earlier. Because, um... He used to call Alan Wake, um... Like, H.P. Lovecraft, Hemingway, like, all these different, like... Uh, author names. Everything but him. So you knew our victim? Well, I didn't recognize him in his current state. But yeah, I ran into him a few times at Quantico. Never worked any cases together. After his partner got killed in the field, he went off the deep end. Got the boot pretty quick after that. So what happened to Nightingale after the Bureau let him go? I only know the rumors. Depression led to booze, booze led to paranoia. He got some wild ideas in his head, chased ghosts until he fell off the map. Guess he ended up here. I bet there's more to that story. But no happy ending. Nightingale went missing 13 years ago, 2010. The same as all the other victims. Certainly fits the pattern. Makes me wonder what was going on that year. Probably something this town wants to forget. Hmm. Before I check the mine place, let me... I think that's everything. For now, at least. Mm-hmm. Anything clicking yet? Not sure. Need to think about it. Let me check over here real quick. Before I... A creepy twig sculpture? I had to review the clues. Wonder what's inside. It says, wash your hands. I should take a look around for a way to open this thing. Take the chicken out of the fridge, take a nap. So hands, fridge, nap. Let's see, hands, fridge, nap. I'm gonna go check something out. Be right back. Got it. Hands, fridge, nap. Okay. Okay, so the, the angled one, the, the uh, vertical, so angle vertical, and side, okay. Let's see if that works. So it should be this one. This one, and then this. Look at me puzzle solving right in the beginning. Anderson. <laughs> Let's get back to work over here, can we? Casey's just impatient now. All right, let's get over here. This whole investigation stuff is awesome, though. Alright, so let's see, we got... You knew the victim. You knew the victim. Robert Nightingale, ex-FBI, came to Bright Falls 13 years ago. All this stuff is leading to premeditated. They planned for the murder to happen here. Passing the time with equipment ready. They were waiting for him. But why Nightingale? He's been missing for 13 years. Hmm. 
Why here? Why now? It's a good question. The victim came from. Profiling. Get into the subject's head. See what they saw. Feel what they felt. There we go. Use whatever I know about them to guide my intuition to a revelation. Piece it together. Let's do it. Agent Nightingale has been MIA for 13 years. How did he end up here? Up from the lake that's not a lake. It's dark. He was there too. You are not allowed in the lake until he says otherwise. Robert Nightingale came from the lake before his murder. All right. Nightingale was chosen as the victim. Why? Click the switch. It goes click. Lights are off. At somebody's home. Somebody's home. This wasn't some random act of violence. This was a ritual. A Nightingale a component. They didn't see him as a person. More like a container for something. Hmm. So from here... Nightingale came from Cold Lake. Yeah, I guess that settles it. The lake is connected to Nightingale somehow. Casey, let's take a look down by the lake. Lead the way. Sounds good. Uh, this way, right? Right. Well, okay. Well, I'll just, uh, I'll just wait here. You do that. <laughs> All right. Gonna walk in silence, or are you gonna this talk? This one of your hunches, Anderson. Did something happen at the lake? I think Nightingale came up from that direction. From the lake. Probably looking for shelter. Safety. They were waiting for him. When you're ready, I'd love to hear what you put together so far. Sure. It's not that complicated. Nightingale was out in the woods alone at night. Possibly noon. The killers knew he was here. Ambushed him. Dragged him to the campgrounds. Strapped him to the table. Cut his heart out. But then they were interrupted by those witnesses, the bookers. The job is unfinished. That seems pretty complicated to me. What was this guy doing skinny dipping at this time of year? I haven't figured that part mm -hmm. out yet. Mm-hmm. Lots of questions. Lots of answers for us to find. I didn't know trees got that big. Oh, yeah. Excuse me, the creeps. You need to get out more. <laughs> it is kind of creepy, though. Oh. Footprints here. Footprints back here too. I don't really see the footprints. I just see the footprints here. It's like start right here by the tree. Huh, interesting. Tracks. Barefoot. Nightingales? They come out from under the boulder. It makes no sense. There's a piece of paper on the ground. A page full of text on one side. Not a printout. Written with a typewriter. Old school. Lines scratched out and edits added with a pen. Mm-hmm. Like a manuscript. Page of a story. Hmm. Killer left a message. It's for us. The text is about us. The victim was one of their own. FBI Special Agent Robert Nightingale. And then there was the page they found. The first step down into terrifying depths. Reading, Reading the, the words. words. These, These words, words felt like a message. Felt like a message. Someone knew they were here. Someone playing a game with them. An invitation. How could they not accept? Even, even if they, they knew, knew it would end up hurting, hurting them. Someone's been watching us. Playing a sick game with us. You were right. 
This is right up my alley. Nightingale came this way. Either he dropped this page, or the killers left it for us. Well, let's check this now. Uh, case board, right? Trail's gone cold. Came from. Okay, gone cold there. Uh, break from the rock right there. I think he came from the lake. But his tracks make no sense. Right. found a page in the woods. A story about these events. What is Nightingale's role in this? I carry his words close to my chest now. Inside. The awful truth. He must dig it out. Something was put inside him. In his chest. Hmm. I must find out what. Yeah, what could have been put in his chest? Found all I can here. Time to properly examine the body. See what I can find inside. All right. Casey, uh, I think something's been put inside Nightingale's body. Let's tell the deputies to get the body to the town morgue. Okay. All right, let's head back. Whoever wrote that page made sure it read like a story. Like a scene from a thriller. I hate all of it. The text said we'd find more. I believe it. But what's the purpose? They're twisting events to create their own narrative to do... What? Entertain some fantasy? Projecting their desires? Are we characters or the audience? Witnesses to their design? All the above? It's all about control. Deciding what happens to who. Don't let it drag you in. Too late. I'm already hooked. I need the next chapter. Oh, those light beams is awesome. Yeah, like just to rays of light go through. The, the detail is awesome. It's amazing. I feel like we got up here way faster than it took us to get down there. Hey, you made it back. Good. I hope you didn't get stuck in any of those big puddles. Crazy flooding down there, huh? Just like I said. Deputy, I want the body taken back to town for a proper examination, ASAP. Well, sure. But the coroner won't be back in town for another week after Deer Fist. Not a problem. I'll do it myself. Oh, and Sheriff Breaker called to say he's got the bookers at the O'Deer Diner in town. Oh, and I've got a key to the gate. It's a shortcut back to the parking lot just up the hill. All right. Thanks. Let's get the car, drive to Bright Falls, and talk to these witnesses, the bookers. At the diner, right? I, I could use a cup of coffee. Let's try that shortcut the deputy mentioned. Sounds good. All right. Give it a whirl. Yeah, Seems like walked. a nice town so far. Murders aside. Pretty she woods. She walked through that pretty cautiously. Cute lodge we got set up in. We should go for a hike if we get a chance. Now you're just being mean, Anderson. Deputies aren't exactly up to the task, but hopefully the sheriff will be more helpful. Not a surprise about the deputies. Doubt they see much stuff this gruesome. Fair enough. I mean, last time they probably saw anything this gruesome anyway was probably like 13 years ago when Alan Wake went missing. Yeah, because, uh, 13 years ago. There was a lot Can't of fit the clues all together yet. Heart removed, tripod, tracks leading to a dead end. A tripod for a camera? To record a <gasps> snuff film? Maybe. 
And why take out his heart just to throw it away? To stuff in something for us to find. It's pretty interesting how they piece that together though and come up to, with that as a solution. Just from what they've gathered so far. Here we are. Let's drive back to town and meet the sheriff at the diner. Uh, Casey's just like so quiet and stoic. <laughs> I can't get that manuscript page out of my head. I've never seen killers reach out so directly before. Damn impressive work so far. With your technique, these hunches were moving fast. I wasn't sure about taking a case so far from home, but I'm thrilled to be here for this mystery. <laughs> Need to swing by the lodge to get anything from the field office? No, I'm all set. I'll park there anyway. I want to walk to the diner, get a feel for the town. All right. The diner's just up the waterfront. Shouldn't keep the sheriff and our witnesses waiting. I smell coffee. <laughs> Feels going nuts over here. Just how much coffee have you had today, Charlie? <laughs> don't know, don't care. <laughs> how much did you have? Not enough. That's how much. Never oh dear. You. <laughs> Welcome to Bray Falls. It's nice to have you here. I got you both some coffee. Oh, it's Washington's finest. Nice to meet you, Sheriff. I'm set for coffee. You know, I wouldn't say no to another. <laughs> I'm Agent Saga Anderson. This is Agent Alex Casey. Tim Brinker. And let me just say, I'm happy you two are here. Frankly, we could use the help. Your deputies said you had a couple of witnesses here. They made them sound like suspects. Mulligan and Thornton are still on about that? No, no, the Bookers don't strike me as the murdering type, but you can decide for yourselves. They're just inside having coffee and pie to calm their nerves. I'll see what they have to say. Casey, you compare notes with the Sheriff. Take your time. We've looked through the case files you sent over, Sheriff. Have you had many people besides the known victims go missing? Sure. But it's slowed down ever since Calvin Lake was fenced off. Let me guess. Missing person cases spiked around 2010. The fence was built just after. Yeah, that's exactly right. Hmm. Heh. <laughs> can't believe that happened. I still feel like I'm gonna be sick. Come on, Ed. Have some pie. Excuse me. Hey, come on. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. Are you the bookers? That's us. I'm Tammy, and he's Ed. Oh, officer. Just Saga is fine, Ed. So, are we being charged with anything? Because if not, we'd love to get back to our hotel and decompress after what we saw. Take a bath, screw into pillows, that kind of thing. We're not charging you. I just have a few questions. Nothing to stress about, okay? She's so hostile. What were you doing at Colgen Lake last night? I'm a writer. True crime. We're here from New York, doing some research on a famous novelist, Alan Wake, who went missing here. I was down at the lake, getting some details. Perfectly legal. Okay, can you, like, remove some of the, the hostility there? Jeez. So what did you see in the woods? This naked dude came out of the lake, and... 
was acting crazy, shouting weird shit at us. He must have been on something. Unless skinny dipping at dawn is a thing around here. Then we heard shooting. We ran into these psychos in deer masks. They were tearing into the naked guy with knives, like some kind of satanic cult. And then we bolted and called the cops. What makes you say it was a cult? <laughs> the masks and knives aren't enough. They were shouting, cult of the tree, the cult of the tree, the cult of the tree. Oh, and then we found out. The whole thing was terrifying. That's all. Why'd you have to, like, cut him open again? Yeah, now you have to profile him because, like, you know she's hiding something. The cult of the tree. What aren't the bookers telling me? I found their necklace. The symbol is two triangles. The cult wants their spruce tree bag, Tammy. Finders keepers, Ed. My publisher will want this on the cover. Tammy found something. A necklace belonging to one of the cultists. The bookers were at Cauldron Lake. Why? The prince was built to hide what's there. They say the rider fell in the lake. Private party. No trespassing. My book has questions. Past the bolt cutters. They broke in for the sake of Tammy's book. Nothing to do with the murder. They were telling the truth. Hmm. So case board. So them. We're dealing with an organized group of ki The cult of the tree is behind these murders. This case just became much more complicated. I'll need to start a new file. But it's my first cult case. Exciting. I don't know if I'd be excited about that. But I didn't mean to cut off the speech on the other one. I need to know more about the code of the tree if I'm going to shut them down. Well, that's a given. Cult to swear tear mask. Yeah, that works for that. Symbols. Yeah. Um. Stashes. These stashes could contain clues about the cult. Better keep an eye out for more. Alright. And this one was in Cauldron Lake. Alright. And you the witnesses the diner. Alright. So you found something there, right? A necklace these cultists may have dropped. Okay. Wow. How did you put that together? It's evidence. You need to hand it over. Okay. The attitude. Jeez. Told you not to keep that thing in me. Ed's a good guy. Thanks. This could prove to be helpful. Do me a favor. Stick around town for now in case we have any more questions. <laughs> like we'd even dream of missing dear. Oh, God. Anderson, as I live and breathe. I thought we'd never see you back here after that awful, awful thing happened to your baby girl. How are you? Um, I'm sorry. Who are you? I don't know what you're talking about. It's me, silly. Rose. You know me. I don't think I do. And what horrible thing happened to my baby girl? She drowned. Your daughter. <laughs> That's so weird, you don't remember. How do you know I have a daughter? Oh, I know what this is. You're blocking out your traumatic memories. 
happens on TV all the time. No. You're mistaking me for someone else. <laughs> if you say so. So good to see Rose again, even though she's a nutcase. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the jukebox, the torn note, and you sat here. Oh, there's a note. What does that say? The jukebox is out of order. The poor old thing can only take so much of the same song being played over and over and over. I'm as big of a fan of coconut as the next person, but come on. <laughs> That's great. Oh. A cult murdering a man is pretty extreme. Why didn't you tell the police what you saw? We did. We told those two idiot deputies they didn't listen. And they wanted to throw Ed and I in jail for that murder. You know, Bright Falls is just Alabama with bigger trees. <laughs> this is my case now, and no one is throwing you in jail. If you need anything else, just come to me. Got it. Thank you. Oh, that, that, that's probably the nicest thing I've actually heard out of her mouth the entire time. All set? My guys have Nightingale at the morgue if you're ready to go take a look. Let's go. Well, Casey, I got a lead. Looks like we're dealing with a cult. The cult of the tree. A murder cult. Fuck. Have you heard of this cult of the tree, Sheriff? Only the urban legend. If you're in the woods at night, the cult will get you. That sort of thing. We're not gonna find out you're the Grand Wizard or something, are we? I played some D&D &D back in the day. Wizard was always my favorite class. Morning, <laughs> Sheriff! Looks like you have some guests! Ah, uh, morning, Ted. Yeah, real important guests. Deerfest. Always draws a crowd, right? <laughs> Too true! More the merrier. Have a good one, Sheriff! Deerfest. Still going strong. Hey, what do you know about that waitress from the diner? <laughs> Rose? Yeah, she's a bit of a space case. She always has been. Why? What'd she do now? She kept saying that my daughter drowned. She even knew my name. It was all very weird. Rose has a talent for saying the weirdest thing possible. But it's best not to take a person. Hey, boss. The corpse is downstairs ready to go. Yep, in the morgue, all prepped. I'd like to take a closer look as soon as possible. Lead the way, Sheriff. Oh, this is the Bright Falls Sheriff Station. Anything you need, just uh, let us know. We appreciate the support, Sheriff. The shine on, like, the posters and everything is... So we share a morgue with the funeral home next door. It's a shoestring budget. I guess you guys don't have that problem, though. Our <laughs> only coroner rotates between a few other towns, and he's away this week. But you can handle this, right? I'm qualified to perform examinations. Yes. Something about morgues. They always cheer me up. <laughs> I can't say I feel the same. He's joking. Terry like just doesn't budge doesn't say a word. It's not opening. Oh. Okay. Let's take a look at our patient. Alright. I'll start with the external inspection before performing the internal examination. What was the cause of death? What other clues can the body give me? Defensive wounds. He put up a fight. There's writing on here. Can't make it out. Writing? How'd they 
manage that. Hmm. This looks like text. A tattoo? Nightingale didn't strike me as a tattoo guy. The body shows signs of being submerged in water post-mortem. It doesn't add up. Yeah, it's weird. Uh huh. They did leave something inside his chest. Right, we got a case for it here. Time to see what Nightingale's body can tell us. Yeah. Alright, let's see what we can get here. Back up a little bit here. Um, chest ripped open. That's not right. Chest wound is cause of death, but the corpse is bloated, waterlogged. It was Doesn't right. Up. There's definitely something in his chest. Did the killers leave it there? Let's check. Same type of page we found at Cauldron Lake. Nightingale hunted Saga. Didn't see her. The Taken could not see into bright light. Light hurt them, made them vulnerable. Nightingale had no heart, but here he was. Killing. Someone's created a fucked up fantasy about us. Hey, hold on. We found these kinds of pages. I didn't think they were relevant to this case. I have them right here. No, 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 wait! Didn't see her. Could not see into bright light. Can't see me in the light. My gun's out in the hall. Gotta get it back. Safe havens will restore some of your health. If you leave or attack from a safe haven while in combat, it will become temporarily unavailable. 
Gotta move. Now. So good. And that's the introduction to Alan Wake 2. <laughs> uh, so glad. So we're, we're caught up to what our stream is up to right now, and I'm glad I actually uninstalled the game and reinstalled it on the hard drive because you could tell like there was no delay with the audio. So if anybody is watching this now as opposed to the stream, you'll notice that there was a gap with the audio. So. But yeah, like, I'll continue this next chapter on stream, and I'm going to record it too, and we're going to continue from there to everything that happens next. So I'll catch everyone in the next step. Alright, thanks for watching everyone. Alright, bye. Bye.